All right, if you will take your Bibles and let's open them together, the Gospel account of Matthew chapter 5. We're going to look at a verse here in just a few moments. Glad to see you back tonight. I um, will not keep you very long tonight. I do want to share some thoughts with you, but the sealing process um, is quite interesting. It seems like... Um, I'll have some good days and then some days where the discomfort is just pretty rough, and today has been one of those days. Uh, it's been a rough Sunday. Let's just put it that way. Um, Miss Jennifer uh, is home. Uh, she's been running 101 fever all day today. Don't know what it is. I think most of us just kind of imagine it's that C word. We hate to uh, even say that word in our home, uh, but it likely is. Uh, so I ask you to, to pray for her. But I'll tell you what, um, this is my 46th year of life. I don't remember ever being this hot in my lifetime. I mean, our AC at the house, it can't keep up. It really can't. Uh, it's It's been amazing the last few days. And you look at the weather forecast, and there's no break inside, is there? My son has been uh, doing fall camp and football out in 100-degree weather, which is just, wow. I can't even imagine it, but um, I'm grateful you're here tonight. You know, I wasn't feeling that great this morning, but then um, I was telling Ron Hazel in the back, you, you baptize a 13-year-old into Christ, that kind of makes your morning a lot better. And always uh, grateful to get to spend time with you. If you're wondering why I'm not hugging on you today. Uh, you think you can uh, common sense understand. I don't want to put anybody at risk, but so glad to see all of you tonight. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has become tasteless, how will it be made salty again? It is good for nothing anymore, except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Raise your hand if you've read that verse before. Who's ever heard of tasteless salt or spoiled salt? You ever heard of tasteless salt? You ever ran across in your pantry? You ever pulled the salt out and, and it had no taste? Lumpy salt, yes, especially here in South Texas where the humidity is high. Lumpy salt, yes. Tasteless salt, no. After all, if you know the, the science behind it, sodium chloride is sodium chloride. It may be wet salt or salt clumps, but it is still salt that tastes like salt and acts like salt. Regardless of appearance, salt is salt. I never heard my mother say in all the years growing up, Jonathan, you need to go to your aunt's house and borrow a new box of salt. This box of salt has spoiled. It is no longer salt. I'll throw this old box of salt out in the yard and you go get us some more salt. So if salt cannot become spoiled or tasteless, we better figure out what Jesus was saying. First, he was speaking to a common situation 2,000 years ago. Second, a government taxes a product everybody uses and needs to acquire the most revenue possible. Third, each time the product would be taxed, we're speaking of salt for just a moment, each time the product is taxed, the seller's profit, what would happen to the seller's profit? It would go where? Down. Fourth, then, a typical way in Jesus' day to regain profit was to do what? To dilute the product with a cheap lookalike. Bet you never thought about that when it came to the salt Jesus is talking about here, had you? Maybe you have, I don't know. Typically, though, in Jesus' day, whenever a salt merchant was taxed on the salt at the border, he would regain his loss by adding a cheap lookalike to the salt. And this happened, if this happened enough, 
the result would be a tasteless salt. A salt that neither added flavor nor preserved fresh meat, because you realize that one of the greatest uses for salt was preservative for stuff such as, you know, fish. The sodium chloride had not spoiled. It was just too diluted to serve its function constructively. However, even the most diluted salt mixture was destructive to vegetation. Small amounts of salt kill plants. Did you know that? So what did one do with this potentially harmful mixture? It would be scattered in the road where you didn't want what to grow. Right. They, or us, as I believe this passage not only speaks to them in Jesus' day, but to us as well, they were not to become so deluded by evil, by evil influences, that they were no longer good for good, but only good for harm. I want you to take your Bibles now to Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 24. Now tonight, as we before we read this passage, I hope that you can see the message is very plain here. You go back to what Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has become tasteless, if it has become diluted by what? Evil, by sin. How will it be made salty again? It is good for nothing anymore except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. So what is it that can cause us as salt of the earth to become diluted? What are some things that can make that possible? Look at me now. Galatians chapter 5, 16 through 24. Paul says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. These are the things that can dilute your saltiness, your influence, your Christ-like spirit amongst others. What are these things? Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, Jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So is it plain to see how those things that Paul just mentioned could dilute your ability to be salt? Of the earth? Is it possible that our influence as Christians today in this world has been diluted? Because we've allowed too many of the worldly things of this life to come in and compromise our example? But the good news is there is a way back. If you are truly led by the Spirit, these are the ingredients that will make you truly salt of the earth. What are they? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. If your Christian life is characterized by love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, you are truly salt of the earth. If you have struggled and allowed things to dilute your saltiness, your influence, your Christ-like spirit, 
then these are the fruit of the Spirit that can allow you once again to show that light of Jesus Christ in your life. Not a hard lesson. Not to speak, even with a bad mouth. Not hard to say. Sometimes hard to execute. Because I read that list a couple of times this week, and I realize there have been many times in my life where I've diluted my influence by some of those things. Look at the last part of this verse, and then the lesson is yours. Galatians chapter 5, the end, those who belong to Christ, Jesus, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. What is the one thing that can stand in the way tonight of you being the salt of the earth? It's right there. Your own passions. How many times do we see our brethren become so consumed by various passions that it divides their interests, divides their allegiance to God, and they become devoted to something or someone else? Or what about desires? Do we have desires in this room? You ever had a desire? I would think so. Not all desires are contrary to God's will. As I've shared with you before, there are many good desires. But don't allow a good desire to take precedent over the greatest desire. And that is to be like Jesus Christ. To be the salt of the earth. hope this message will sit with you this week will be something that you consider as you go about the beginning and this entire week, no matter what comes your way. Let's pray together. Father, your word has many beautiful ways of expressing the truth in a way that is common and relatable to us. And Jesus, Father, as he walked this earth, understood the importance of speaking a message from you that your people could take to heart and apply it in their lives to be more in line with your will. This week, Father, we'll go to our cabinet and we'll pull out the salt. Maybe we'll stop and remember this message. Are we truly being the salt of the earth? What is it that is causing us to lose that taste, lose that effect in this world? Why is it, Father, that many Christians don't seem much different than the rest of the world? Maybe it's because, Father, we've allowed things to dilute the Christ-like spirit that should be overwhelmingly present within us. Or maybe it is, Father, that we've just not surrendered to that spirit like we ought to. Whatever that reason, Father, I pray, whatever that hindrance may be, that we would cast it aside so that we can truly be salt of the earth. Father, as we go about the beginning of this week, Father, help us to live with the fruit of the Spirit directly in our mind. That we would have love for one another, joy in serving you, peace, patience. We'd find opportunities for kindness and goodness. That'd be not only faithful to our fellow man, but overall faithful to you. Gentleness. Father, help us to be controlled by your spirit, because only then is it truly self-control. Father, help us to live the fruit of the spirit in our life, Father, this is a byproduct of your Spirit living in us because each and every one of us in this room could not achieve this fruit without your Spirit. Help us to be who you have called us to be. Help us to live in such a way that others can see it overflowing from our lives. Forgive us for many sins and trespasses. Help us to always turn to you. Through Jesus that we pray. Boy is going to lead us in this song of encouragement tonight. If you have any need, let us assist you now as we stand and sing together.